I don't think I've ever shared this in any video. The people that have hurt me most in my life are other Christians. <laughs> so how do you overcome a lot of the money problems and financial problems that everybody's experiencing today? Well, I'll cover 12, what we call my dirty dozen, values and principles from the wisest and richest king who ever lived, King Solomon, in his Wealth and Wisdom series, episode 11 of the Seven Figure Squad, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And we're so fired up because we're so close to 150,000 subs. So if you feel that we've shared and provided some value for you, consider liking this video. If you watched multiple videos and you haven't done so already yet, please consider hitting subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. What are these dirty dozen values in principles to go about running your financial life and the decisions you make in your life. Well, how many times have you ever made mistakes with money? How many times when you realized you started going about your business, you started your first job, your second job, you got married, you started handling finances with your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, teaching money principles to your children or things that you are just dealing with on a daily basis and you're starting to realize, whoa, where did this money programming come from? How did I go about spending money this way? How did I go about saving money this way? How did I go about making these decisions with money to begin with? See, a lot of us come from socioeconomic differences based on how we were raised with money. Your parents, your grandparents, influences of your friends and people that you looked up to growing up and how you looked upon people that were celebrities, how you looked upon people that were dealing with finances and how you looked upon people that were in general successful in your eyes. What I've realized, if you wanna go about being successful in your finances, it's how you think money, and how you think money, again, is based on values and principles. And you've gotta know something about King Solomon. King Solomon, again, was regarded as the wisest and richest king who ever lived. So, when we're looking at Proverbs chapter 11, in previous weeks, we've done a proverb every week. We've done Proverbs one, one week, Proverbs two, one week, Proverbs three, all the way up to 10. This week is Proverbs chapter 11. So if you're following along with us, Consider open up your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 11, but the foundational verse for this week's biblical perspective as it relates to money, finances, and success and prosperity is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1, and it reads like this. The Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with Him. We're going to be talking about a lot of the do's and don'ts about how to handle your finances, so therefore you avoid a lot of problems by first installing values and principles that will allow you to make better decisions when it comes to money, success, wealth, and prosperity. So let's take a look at first one. King Solomon talks about pride, pride leading to disgrace, but if you consider invoking humility, it will lead you to wisdom. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse two. It reads like this. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. You know, that's probably one of the hardest things to do today is be humble to say, you know what, I've screwed this up. I don't know what's going on in my finances. Sometimes a lot of people use money as a way to manipulate, use money as a way to invoke power and control over other people. But if you invoke wisdom, that means you've invoked humility to start with. If you agree with this value, you want to install it with this affirmation, put it in the comment section below. I am seeking humility over pride. I am seeking humility over pride. Put it in the comment section below. Let's look at the second one, unfaithful. If you start handling your money unfaithfully, you go about business unfaithfully, you end up what we call doing double dealing. You're trying to please multiple people. You got to tell multiple lies. That's called being a double dealer. You're dealing. Okay, you're trying to do please other people. But if you go about with integrity, even if it means costing you financially, costing you a promotion, costing you business expansion, but you go about with integrity, if this will guide you for the rest of your life, Proverbs 11, Verse three reads like this, the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Third one is godless. If you're godless, you will be destroyed. So in other words, a lot of times people today say, well, I'm just gonna be a good person. And I'm just challenging that, that's not good enough. But if you're seeking knowledge, because sometimes people are, this, I'm just a good enough person, but they don't go research, they don't find out how they formulate their values principles and opinions. But if you're seeking knowledge, you will escape a lot of the bad problems. Proverbs chapter 11, verse nine, it reads like this. With their mouths, the godless destroy their neighbors, but through knowledge, the righteous escape. 
So who do you want to be in that scenario? Number four, when the wicked perish, when the wicked get fired, canceled, sadly pass away, guess who celebrates? Everybody. Joy permeates everybody when the wicked perish, fired, or get out the way. But the righteous, when they prosper, if your person had go about business, you go about decisions, you go about it in a righteous manner, you will prosper. And guess who rejoices? Everybody. The city rejoices. Now, you might have your enemies. You might have your backstabbers. I didn't say you're not going to be removed of that. But the city will rejoice. The city will prosper because of you choosing to operate in a prosperous, righteous manner. Number five, if you go about business and you want to gossip and talk about other people, eventually betrayal is going to come your way. But if you go about operating business, being trustworthy, and you learn how to keep secrets, like people share things with you, and you're like, oh, that feels kind of uncomfortable that you shared that with me. But at the same time, too, if you felt uncomfortable, you don't say, hey, by the way, guess what they told me? That's gossiping. But if you want to be trustworthy, people say things to you. They may have a bad day. They may not realize what they're saying, but it's not up to you to spread gossip. But for you to be trustworthy in that conversation, I'm reminded of somebody that wanted to come to our agency. She says, I want to do business with you. I do business with your competitor. Your competitor does this, your competitor does that. Okay, trying to get my business. And then I was about to do business with her, and then she started giving me the drop on my competitor. She goes, yeah, that person over there, they do this, do they do that. I'd rather do business with you because, you know, over there they do things this way. I don't agree with it, but I'd rather do business with you. Listen, you have to understand, over a period of time, when you are in a relationship, guess what's going to happen? What eventually starts to happen is conflict. And we have conflict, what does that person do? Do they spread gossip about you? Or do they maintain the trustworthiness of that relationship and keep things between you and them? That when conflict comes, you're all right. So if you affirm with me, you want to install this in your life, follow me this affirmation. I am trustworthy to keep secrets versus sharing gossip. I am trustworthy to keep secrets versus sharing gossip. Number six, if you operate with a lack of guidance, a whole entire nation will fall. Your last name will fall if you're operating just saying, you know what, I'm just going to be a good person. I'm just going to go with the flow, ba 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 if you're not seeking guidance because you lack it. However, if you do seek guidance, right, if you do seek guidance, is because you chose to seek the guidance of many advisors. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, it reads like this. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors. Now, I'm reading this Bible from the John Leadership Maxwell Bible of his perspective of the Bible through the lens of leadership. And he has an imprint here that I'd like to share with you in terms of who you should have in terms of characteristics of your inner circle. He leaves eight traits and these eight traits are this. Number one, you surround yourself with creative people, surround yourself with loyal people, people who share your vision, wise and intelligent people, people with complementary gifts, people with influence, people of faith and people of integrity. Those eight things I just shared with you, ask yourself right now, the people you send the most frequent text messages to, the people that you hang with the most, the people that you call the most, the people when it's chill time, and who do you call hang time, go to dinner with, celebrate your birthday with, do these folks have these eight checklists? If not, hmm, maybe you need to seek more advisors, more people that can counsel you to have a wealthy life, a prosperous life, a financial rewarding life, and a godly life. If you want to install this value and principle into your life, follow with me in this affirmation. Put it in the comment section below. In making decisions, I seek many advisors versus doing it myself. In making decisions, I seek many advisors versus doing it in myself. If that's you, put it in the comment section below. Number seven, the ruthless. Sure, you can be ruthless about business. Totally get it. It's a buzzword, right? But here's the thing. Yes, you'll get wealth, but that's about it. You get money, but that's about it. You get all this money, you get all the success, you get all this prosperity, but you are alone if you go about business in a ruthless way. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17, it reads like this. Those who are kind benefit themselves, but the cruel bring ruin on themselves. Is it hard to be ruthless or hard to be kind? Where are you at right now? Ask yourself that question. Number eight, the wicked earns deceptive wages. Sure, you make money, but man, deep down inside, you're wicked. There's something dark about you and not in a good way. But if you decide to sow righteousness, if you decide to be kind, to benefit others, you will reap a reward. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18, it reads like this. A wicked person earns deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness 
reaps a sure reward. Number nine, if you're the type of person that withholds things, you withhold information, you don't share. Oftentimes people say, you know, I'm not gonna keep talking about this because eventually people learn my secrets. Well, why don't you share your secrets and how to become wealthy and how to invest in real estate, how to build your own infinite family bank with life insurance, how to invest in the stock market, how to make sure you start building a business and increase your credit score. Why don't you start sharing those things? But people that withhold that, they end up in poverty. However, if you give freely, you, not only individual, but those around you, they also gain more. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25, it reads like this. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Yet a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So if you're seeking some guidance and you have some success, are you just keeping it to yourself or are you lifting people up? Are you pushing people up? Are you taking others along with you? Number 10, whatever you find you're gonna get in this instance, if you seek evil, you'll find it. If you seek good, you'll find it. For everybody out there trying to Google things, lots of times people Google things to validate their own individual prejudices, their own individual biases, and own individual ways of looking at things based on them seeking what they want on the internet. There's enough people out there that are complaining. There's enough people out there that are winning. Whichever you seek, you will find. Here in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 27, it reads like this. For whoever seeks good finds favor, but evil comes to those who search for it. So what do you want to look for? Because whatever you look for is going to find you. And I'm reminded of this conversation I had with Chris Gardner who the movie played by Will Smith was made after the inspiration of his real life story. He's a Navy veteran and he finds himself in a relationship and they're trying to make ends meet and put things together. And they're raising her son, Chris Jr. However, what she was seeking was a better life that he could not provide. She was seeking a better life instead of uplifting him, instead of him encouraging him, instead of being somebody that can help him accomplish that, she just dogged him out. And eventually she left him. And make a long story short, the reason why I resonated with Chris Gardner deeply is because he became a single father. He became a single father. He chose the world of finance. He chose the world of entrepreneurship. And his life was immensely blessed. The whole entire movie was made after his entire life. So I just you check it out. Number 11, what do you trust in? Do you just trust in money? Or do you trust in God? Do you trust in your faith? Do you trust in godly guidance? Well, let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28, it reads like this. For those who trust in the riches will fall, but the righteous will thrive like a green leaf. Again, if you trust in your riches, eventually, man, done. If you trust in the fact that you are in a position of saying, listen, let me make a righteous decision to not only bless myself, but furthermore to bless God, to bless his people, to make his name known, to be a kingdom builder, to be an entrepreneur, that blesses other people's lives outside of just hoarding it for myself. Whichever you decide, you will get. And last but not least, what type of last name did you inherit? What last name do you want to create? What last name do you want to pass on? Whoever brings ruin on their family will inherit only wind. And the fool will be a servant to the wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and the one who is wise saves lives. So who do you want to be? Somebody that brings ruin to their family, that lifts up their family, or do you want to bring fear, poverty to your family? Because here's what you're going to inherit. You're going to inherit air. You're going to inherit the wind. And you will make sure that your generation and generation thereafter works for somebody else. You can work for yourself, you can work for God, or you can work for somebody else. Again, the choice is yours. I always look at this path, this visualization. If your goal is to be wealthy, if your goal is to be successful, have a life of prosperity and financial freedom, have a goal of philanthropy, charity, contribution, being a kingdom builder, blessing other people because you've been blessed. If that's your situation, if you want to go about making sure that whatever problem you go through, you're blessed, I believe that we're all on a journey. And on this journey, there's a lot of distractions. Family distractions, 
financial distractions, career and business trans uh, uh, distractions, relationship uh, distractions, even religious uh, uh, distractions. I remember uh, going to multiple churches. I remember the biggest, <laughs> I'll put it this way, the people that have hurt me the most, I don't think I've ever shared this in any video, the people that have hurt me most in my life are other Christians. <laughs> but yet I love God. How does that work out? Because you know why? Because it's not, God is not about how other people treat me. It's how I treat God and how God treats me. Now it's up to me in that moment that I get mistreated, that I get my back stabbed. It's up to me and how I react. I can't control how things come at me, but I can control based on these do's and don'ts that uh, King Solomon has written out here in Proverbs chapter 11. I can choose how I respond. I can choose how I can either, either honor myself or I can honor God. I believe you have that same choice too as well. So as I wrap up this episode, my final thoughts is this. You and I are both a byproduct of the decisions we've made in our life. Now for me, I've learned a long time ago, I've made a lot of bad decisions. Hopefully by watching this video, you can avoid a lot of bad decisions and get to good decisions sooner in your life versus later. But for many of you, you want to live a wealthy life, you want to live a prosperous life. Some of you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Some of you want to say, I want to make sure I never let inflation or 7.9% inflation rates or rising interest rates affect me ever again. Well, correct. But remember, you and I are the byproduct of the choices that we make, not necessarily in the good times, but more so in the bad times, because in the bad times, that's when character is revealed. And when your character is revealed, which path do you find yourself on? Do you find yourself on the fast, quick, easy path, which will lead to destruction, ruthlessness, wickedness, evil? Or do you find yourself in a path of seeking knowledge, seeking advisors and counselors, seeking trustworthy people to counsel you and give you guidance, to sow righteousness versus stealing from others? Which path will you take? I always felt that for all the people that's out there trying to cut corners, finding shortcuts, faster, faster, this, this, that, cut corners, even if it breaks the law. I've always said, if you take that same energy and strategy and mind to do something illegal or wrong, imagine if you could redirect that energy to something that you don't have to look over your shoulders and watch your back all the time, that your pillow is softer at night, that you don't have to worry about people coming after you when you wake up in the morning. Which life would you prefer? Fast, quick, easy life? Or one that takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but you don't have to look over your shoulders because any good thing comes with time. And with that being said, I know I just said it takes time, but I want you to work with urgency and at the same time to work with patience that you're developing and that you're growing. With that being said, guys, if you're watching this episode and you haven't seen the previous episodes of the Wealth and Wisdom Series, check out these other episodes here on the Seven Figure Squad. And if you're checking out, hmm, maybe I have some form of faith-based disposition, check out this episode right here, how the Bible made me a millionaire and it can make you one too as well. With that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, you got some uh, input for this, put it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click like, hit subscribe, and also hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and continue to be money smart today. God bless you guys. Thank <laughs> you.